What's good, America? It's your man, Reggie Florima, a.k.a. Big Flow, uh, coming to you live with another Big Flow show. It's our second edition. Uh, Christmas is around the corner, giving you guys something to look at during your free time. Hopefully, you guys did all your shopping. Uh, I didn't get all your cards yet or your gifts. I'm waiting for that stuff to come in, but I know with COVID and in the post office, everything's going to be slow. So I'll be expecting all the fan mail and all that kind of stuff to be coming. But coming to you again, keeping on the same thing that we did on our last show, I want to bring you one of these prep all-stars, the next guy. Uh, near and dear to my heart, a kid that I've known since he was probably about seven years old. Um, and now he's going to be off to my alma mater. Uh, everybody put your hands together for Justin Walters. What's up, Justin? Hello, Coach. How you doing? Man, fantastic, fantastic. You know, again, normally when I do this show, I try to like mildly, you know, bring the Notre Dame down. I love it. I can put my shirt on. You got the matching shirt with you, everything going on. I can show people the helmet in the background, the game ball over here. Everything's good. It's all a good thing. It's all, all biased. All Tuesday, bias Tuesday is what we're doing. So, um, appreciate you coming on and doing the show, man. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, anytime. So, are you guys done for the semester? Are you is, is high school officially over for you, or what? Well, for us right now, we um, so we have two weeks left because we started late because of COVID. Okay, so we had we started spring break last uh, last Friday. Not spring Christmas break, break. Uh, winter break. Yeah, you're thinking <laughs> of a warmer uh, place. You're thinking of a warmer place, but get that out of your mind, baby, because you're going to yeah, something. <laughs> I know, but uh, yeah, we have uh, two weeks left when we come back, and then we'll end January 15th. Okay, and then okay, that's when I'll be done. That's fantastic, man. Well, congratulations. One chapter's over, another chapter's about to start. So, guys, I've known Justin Walter since he was in first grade. He played football for me back in the day. I think first through third. When did you go to the Trojans? Fourth grade. Yeah, it was some, something like that. Something like first, second, third grade, I had little Justin out there. He was just a little thing, little skinny thing, not just like a little pinky finger out there running around trying to hit people doing things like that. And then he left us and he went to uh, the, the Bowling Brook Trojans and developed into the man that you see today. But I, I like to see, you know, I have a little piece, just a, just some salt and pepper I added to the gumbo to make it go right. So, you know, when you go to Notre Dame, you guys are going to realize this. And Justin, you'll find this out probably about 10 years from now. You're going to look at the phone number and you're going to see uh, 574-631. Those are the first three di six digits of a Notre Dame phone call. And normally they're calling to ask you to donate some money, right? So you get to be used to, am I ready for this phone call or not? How is it going to work out? So I'd like to say that the little piece of salt and pepper I put in the gumbo for Justin is my donation. So you don't have to call me anymore, Notre Dame. Justin Walters is coming to you guys. I helped him kind of, you know, on, with, with the roots to grow to get him right. So anyway. There was no recruiting going on. I just want to let you guys know. Anybody who watches this, it was just simply a joke. Anyway, so talk to me, Justin. So you came up, you know, in a in a in a great family. Uh, mom and dad, strong people. Um, you got four siblings. Talk to me about your family, man. With you, so let's start off with your parents. You know, what did your parents do to, to kind of prepare you for 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 college athletics? You know, I think they just uh, gave us a good example and. Uh, definitely one of the most important like lessons that I've learned from them is how to be level-headed and, you know, stay humble throughout it all. Like, even when, even when I didn't have, you know, any of the offers or um, any of the attention, they always taught us to stay level-headed, no matter what, in the lows and highs, just stay level-headed. And that's probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned from them. And one of the greatest things, one of the greatest attributes that I have now is just staying level-headed. And uh, they've they always they always taught us to respect everybody, and um, you know that translates to now because there's some people that uh, like I'm I wouldn't say I'm not like celebrity status, but I'm like a little you know what I mean. I'm, people I'm, know who you are. Yeah, they people know who I am. But just uh, I still gotta respect all the people that um, that that are fans. You know, yeah. I gotta respect everybody so that's and, you know the page turns now again uh you know i saw a little, little clip that you did for uh, notre dame the other day where you're working at the car wash which hats off to you still out there drying cars or whatever it is you're doing at the car wash and i think uh you know that's great humble you're going off to do some great things but they still got you working so my impression of your parents you know your dad uh early on you're one of the first people you know when i got in there it's my first year of coaching when i had you and um you know, your dad was always telling me how he had you guys doing 100 push-ups a night, doing all this stuff. And I'm thinking, what? You know, at this point, I was just happy if my son, you know, put his plate in the sink. So I heard that. But one of my favorite stories I tell about your mother, right, who's I think your mom's one of the most hardcore people <laughs> that I met in sports. And I tell this story a lot. 
we were playing Berwin. You probably don't remember this. I think you were probably first or second grade. We we're playing Berwin, and it's like a thousand below zero. And we had one of these coaches that came out. All the kids are complaining. My son, I looked over at one point. My son was in my wife's arms in a blanket during the game. I wanted to file for divorce. I was so upset. And we had these one of those gators on the sideline, one of those heaters. And everybody was around the heater, right? And your mom said, boy, get from that heater. Stand over here and man up. <laughs> so here's little Justin. He must weigh about 40 pounds. He's over there freezing. And everybody who knows Justin, I don't know if you changed, but you couldn't stand the cold. So you couldn't stand that cold weather. And his mom was like, you stand here, you man up. And I was like, I respect this one for the rest of my life. So that's my Justin Walter mm -hmm. story with his parents. <laughs> I, had, I remember I had a... Uh... I had burned holes in my gloves from being too close to the heater. That that gym. You wasn't with that though. Nope. Get your get over here, man. Up, man. This is a man's game. I'm like, okay, she's she's okay by me. I'm over here looking at my son in a blanket, and this man is over here shivering. I was cold that day, but we won, so I guess it works out well. So, uh, talk to me about your family. I mean, your 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 kid, your 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 siblings. I mean, you've got uh uh, I call them B Dub. Um, I don't, even, I don't know B Dub's first name. <laughs> What's your oldest brother's name? First name? Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, Brandon Marshall, then, uh, Walters, and then you got your sister. So Brandon is at, at playing for the Army. Yep. Uh, your sister's running track for Miami. And your, your brother is what year in high school? He's a sophomore. sophomore. He's a sophomore. Um, and only now. So, you know, that's a parent's dream. You have four children. You sit back. You wonder, how am I going to pay for all of them to go to school? So don't worry. I'm just going to raise them right. They'll pay for themselves to go. So <laughs> talk to them about the influence of, of, uh, of Brandon. Um, especially in football and being a college experience, what has he told you to prepare for and how has he helped you change how you approach the game in high school? Well, first of all, he just, he, he set a good example just to begin with. He um, <clears throat> just being the first one, cause we've always been undersized. So like some, I didn't, I didn't used to think I would be able to, you know, make it here. So mm -hmm. he, he set a good example by first just believing in himself and making it. And then uh, once he got there, he just been teaching me a lot of lessons about, you know, determination, grit, because at, at Army, you know, they, they're different over there. So, um, But I assume just, that family discipline probably fit right in. I'd say it's like we had regiments at the house. This wasn't much different than <laughs> the military. Right, right. So, so. yeah, he just, um, you know, he, he, he started to teach me, like, what the college football environment was all about, because I didn't have any previous connections in the um, college team. So, just telling me about what D1 football was about, the different speed of the game, um, and just all that. It was, and it's it's good. It's good insight to have. Mm -hmm. Just going to where I'm I'm going, you know. Definitely, role models are important, and I also see that you uh, you know talk to look at your sister as a role model. So, what is she? Is she a track athlete? What is she? Yeah, so she runs uh, sprints and track hurdles, that type of thing. And she's at University of Miami, or. Miami of Ohio. Miami of Ohio. Okay, she did Miami of Ohio run track. So, what what kind of influence does she give you? I don't think you're a track guy, so to speak. I think you're more baseball, right? So, what kind of how does how does her influence translate to 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 how you approach the game? You know, she she's more of the the moral support. Sometimes when I'll get down on myself, she'll always be there for me. Uh, you know, emotionally, and that I'll be able to talk to her easier than my other siblings. So, she just helps me like. Whenever I'm down on myself, just whenever I think that maybe I'm not good enough for this, like she's always there as a backbone to support me, keep me, you know, keep my head level, especially like if I get too high, if I get too low, she's the one that helps me definitely stay level headed, you know. It's fantastic to again have that both sides. So you've got a sister that's not just, you know, being a sister as opposed to a brother, because we know there's a difference there, but then having her also be an athlete at a collegiate level and giving you an understanding kind of what to go through. So I think you're blessed there with those two parents. And now I just your your uh, your youngest brother's gonna be the uh the prodigy, right? Because he's got all all that above him, everything working out to get right. So what is he is he play defensive back as well? Yeah, so he played a. Uh... He played quarterback most of freshman year. Um, then he got hurt a little, and then he moved to safety. And he's a – for summer camp, at least, he was on varsity sophomore year. So it's looking pretty good for him. That's from the Walters family. Now, it's funny because you guys say understand size, but you you guys are always so little when you're young, but you, what, you're six two now. How, how old is B-Dub? How tall is B-Dub now? He's like uh, six foot. Six foot. I mean, so you guys went from small. And sometimes, you know, there's different ways people develop. You get the kid that develops early and he, and he peaks – and then everyone catches up and he doesn't know what to do with himself because now he's no longer the size advantage. But then you get the little guys that 
all of a sudden blow up and now you're actually big as everyone else because um those of you guys who don't know justin go look at some of his youtube videos or whatever lifting the dude's put together so i don't think size is an issue for him anymore um but it's great that you grow and you just keep all the talent and next thing you know you end up at the irish so coming out of, coming out you had a, a lot of offers talk to me about what it came down to what were your final i know i don't know if you ever declared a final four or final five but like what schools did it come down to at the end um well i would say probably um just notre dame michigan was close um northwestern i really liked wisconsin um and i was talking to stanford a lot mm -hmm. so it was mainly um the academic schools and then i got some interest from texas a m and you know, I like the like the warm. So obviously, yeah, that thought, was one that I was considering. I but, just picked the yeah. coldest school. I mean, I don't know. I just picked the coldest one to figure it out. We just we just had to send you some care packages so you could dress warm. Uh, what was it about Notre Dame? Um, I think you 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 committed probably like in February or something. Yeah, February second. February second or whatever. Um, what was it about Notre Dame that that made you pick them? You know, it was um. So I I previously been to a game. Um, it was a New Mexico game. Um, mm -hmm. and that was in the season. So that was when I really knew, like, I was going to let this whole recruiting thing play out. I wanted to take my officials, but, um, you know, I, I took that visit and, and you had foresight saw, because who, who, who knew that all the officials would get canceled because of COVID. So you, right. you got all them. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yeah, I just went there and, you know, the sense of community, I felt like, I felt like they really cared and mm -hmm. all the coaches like they they came up to meet me and they all seemed like they all already just seemed like family too. It was the first time I was meeting them and it seemed like I knew them forever. So it was just really those bonds with the coaches and then um like as I was walking around campus and just everything, everybody it seems like a tight knit community and you know that was that was really something I cared about. Plus obviously it has top tier academics and top tier football. You can't simply you can't get that anywhere else you look at some of the other schools i was considering like um northwestern sanford duke michigan they all uh they have good academics but they don't some of them don't have the football side like michigan they uh they have decent academics decent football but they don't have i didn't have the bonds with the coaches mm -hmm. so notre dame just it was the best combination of everything for me and i knew that and then um, I went back for another visit in uh, end of January, early February. And uh, and that was when I was like, let me just secure my spot because there's nowhere else I want to go. Yeah, you know, talk about that. You and I talked about this, uh, obviously, before the show. And you mentioned that one of the reasons why you took uh, the timing, I guess, of your offer was because of of like kind of availability and how they were taken. So talk about the conversations you had and, and the timing of when you did the offer. So I know the answer to this question, but I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, so um, I think they offered me uh, a little bit after that New Mexico game, like a, mm -hmm. a week later, I think I got a call from Tommy Reese and Coach Joseph saying they were going to offer me. Um, and then – wait, sorry, what was the – Where I'm trying to go with this is, like, you mentioned the reason why you took it when you took it as opposed to wait until later. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, I took it they, – they, they weren't pressuring me in any way. They weren't mm -hmm. saying we're not going to take this many safeties or whatever. They're going to, they weren't pressuring me at all. They just said, if I want to, if I want the spot, I can take it. And I really wanted to just, you know, secure my spot there because I didn't see myself anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I, they were recruiting, I think like four or five other safeties at the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel pressured, but at the same time, I was like, I can't, yeah, yeah. I, I can't let and this opportunity slip. Yeah, I can't let this And the reason why I push you kind of to say that and talk about it is, you know, this this show, um, a lot of different, you know, people are listening to the show sometimes to be young guys, parents, and do whatever. And one thing that you said to me when we talked about it was like, hey, you thought at the time that they may only take a couple safeties and you wanted to make sure you were one of them. And I think a lot of people approaching this, they go into the recruiting um, – uh, thing thinking I'll wait I'll wait and they you know some people get kind of caught up in the storybook of all the visits and the hats and all the different stuff and I know that's not your style you're not the rah-rah guy like that but 
they realize, hey, Notre Dame's taking two safeties in class 2021. You want to be one of them. They're offering five or six people. If you want it, you got to make that decision and you grab it. And I think that that it means a lot to you know you pass up some of that. Although at this point, at that point in your career, you probably uh, the recruiting starts to get a little bit old. But you're passing up a lot of that time just to make sure you get what you want. So I thought that was a very uh, very wise decision for a man your age to, to look at it that way. Yeah, it definitely helped because didn't get any of those visits. <laughs> didn't get any of those visits. Did, did, yeah, did they COVID. get another safety? Oh uh, yeah, they just we just got another safety. Um, his name is Cargi. He was previously committed to LSU and he okay. flipped. He switched over. So you guys got a strong class coming in or whatever. Um, talk to me about your decision to to kind of forego <clears throat> an opportunity to play spring football this uh if we have spring football, spring football in Illinois and just get into college early. Were you always gonna be an early enrollee? Did you think about that from the start or did that kind of a decision that you switch along the way? Um, well, I would say I always had it in the back of my head just because you know, I didn't know at the time that we weren't going to have a season. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was just thinking, like, it's a good idea to go early. Like, I want to enjoy – I want to enjoy high school, but at the same time, like, I want to start my future. I want to take this next step and begin this new chapter. So uh, it was it was probably around early summer where I really made the decision. I was like, I'm going to go early mm -hmm. um, no matter what happens. And then once we got the news that our uh, – our high school season got canceled. That that kind of tripped me up a little bit, but at the same time, I was like, "It's just that's just avoiding possibilities of another injury." Yeah, like the only thing you, that you don't you exactly you the bag. yeah, I see. The it. only thing that sense. uh would come out of having a, a senior season is a little more experience and maybe some a higher ranking, but. You know, that, mm -hmm. that stuff doesn't really matter that it doesn't, much. Yeah, it doesn't sell tickets. Nobody cares what your ranking is once you get to school. So you think right. about all the guys that ball out at some of these small schools that no one's ever heard about and did whatever. So now you're just Justin Walter. So just a little world of advice. This recruiting stuff is over now. So once they, once they get you there, all that, hey, sir, hi, what do you want to eat? Can I get you something to drink? That's all over. Now you're a freshman. You're going to get there. They're going to put a big black tape over your uh, the top of your helmet with freshman camp club so everybody knows you're a freshman and you'll go out there and play. So get ready just to know that the ta that that page in the book has, has turned officially. So we're doing it. Um, you know, you come out of Bolingbrook High School. So if all of you guys are not from Chicago, Bolingbrook High School is a very strong program run by uh, John Ivlo. Um, and Bolingbrook, I don't think there's a school in the state other than maybe East St. Louis, and I don't even know if that's true, that produces more high-level D1 athletes than Bolingbrook. Um, what do you think that is attributed to that, that does that? I mean, in your class alone, you've got uh, on defense alone, you've got what, four or five guys going to college? Three, I think, power five? Yeah. Maybe. Well, Cincinnati is, to me is a power five if you're ranked in the top yeah. ten. You're a power five, but um, you got everything else. What do you think it is? What do you think it is about Bolingbrook? Because I, I always am amazed every year I've been out here that they just always produce. You know, I think it's uh... – partly attributed to Coach Ivlo just having so many connections. He, uh, like, the flow of college coaches through the school, just because of the notoriety of it, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> has definitely helped with a lot of people's recruiting. And I feel like it's because in the past, like, you get it, when once you get a good track record, coaches will start coming back to the school. So, like, people like, um, you know, Cam Mitchell, Tuff Borland, they, when people see that they came out of this school, they, uh, they build the connection with coach Avlo and the school and they, you know, they want to come back and they, that helps a lot. Just having a constant flow of coaches um, mm -hmm. coming through. And successful kids too. I mean, you think uh, uh, tough Borland's been the captain of Ohio state since he was a sophomore. Um, Cam Mitchell, did you watch his game this way? This is the big 10 championship. Did you see the things he did? Yeah. I mean, that was amazing to see this guy got a sack, a pick. sack. First play, he gets put in the game, he gets a sack, then he gets a pick. And this is against Ohio State. Now, this isn't against – this is against Tough Borland and all those guys <laughs> and doing whatever. Yeah. So, you definitely have a tradition out there of, uh, of things to do. So, um, I think you got that that great upbringing there. So, um, you know, talk to me about what you saw with uh, – let's, let's switch topics now. Now you're an Irish man. You represent the Irish. Notre Dame, we took a tough loss this weekend. What do you think uh, – what do you think happened? Uh, you know – I just feel like they just came out flat. Like, I guess some people, you're going to have to have a game like that eventually in your life. Unfortunately, it had to be the Clemson game. But, you know, I feel like they just came out flat. They didn't have, you know, the energy they had the the first time they won. Yeah, I don't know if it's because um, 
they are, they had already beat them the first time, but you know they didn't. I didn't feel like they had the same energy they did. And then, um, you know, it's also just it's hard to beat a good team twice. So um, mm-hmm. they probably had a and different you know, game Trevor plan. Lawrence, as, as Coach Kelly said, Trevor Lawrence is a pretty good football player. So the way yeah. I saw it is, you know, uh, DJ, and I'm not going to make you say too much because you got to go to campus with these boys in a little while. And they don't want to hear all, all your thoughts on, what, on why they lost the game. But, you know, I thought DJ played the uh, the game very well statistically the first time, but he didn't make the third down plays that Trevor Lawrence did. So you could see the difference. Even though he didn't score more points, it was just the way he kept us off the field I thought was was, was interesting. So – what do you think about Bama? I mean, I have a lot of thoughts myself. What do you think about this Bama game? Is it uh, – what do you think we have to do to win? Um, I think we, we definitely need to to be able to stop the pass game. We need to be able to, you know, cover those those elite receivers that they have at Alabama and then also be able to keep some people in the box and, you know, stop Najee Harris. But I think it's, uh, it's better for Notre Dame that the uh, quarterback there, Mac Jones – he can't – I feel like he's not that much of a running threat. Mm-hmm. And they have Najee Harris there, but all that they need to focus on is Najee Harris on the run game. And then um, if they could just stop – I, I say my game plan will be put some extra help in the secondary and then focus your um, linebackers on Najee Harris, and then they'd probably be good. So they just need to – yeah. I actually see it the exact same way that you see it. Um, I think that the reason why we were able to beat uh, Clemson the first time is because we could we could focus on uh, stopping the run. Etienne did not have a good game the first time. This time he had a better one. Uh, but DJ doesn't run this, the ball the way that uh, um, you know uh, Trevor Lawrence runs the ball, and I think that was right. the key that, that killed us. So, you know, I do think we. It sounds crazy. I think we match up a little bit better against Bama than we did against Clemson because they're more traditional. You know they're going to run the, their running backs run and their their receivers catch the ball and we've we've shown that we can stop the run. I just think that running quarterback was was a bit much for us to to, to handle. So if we somehow uh, uh, play our great game and beat Bama, I think that you know the next championship game is going to be tough because you got two quarterbacks that can scramble um, and do that. Right. So, uh, you yourself, I don't know if you <clears> described <throat> the game for the for the guys. I watching tape. I know you're a head banger. Well, no, that's targeting. So you're a shoulder banger. Let's call it that. <laughs> no, I'm targeting cause here. I don't want to juice the refs up. But how do you describe your game and how you how what you're going to bring to Notre Dame? Um, I would probably describe my game as just downfield. You know, in the in the trenches, in the tunnel. Um, I like to I like to come down on people. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I'll definitely I probably compare myself to somebody like Alohi Gilman. Mm-hmm. Um where he he's more of a boundary player Mm -hmm. um but he'll definitely come down on the run but he can also cover because that's something i've been definitely working on this whole offseason is my man coverage so i want to be versatile i want to be able to you know um be putting it put close to the box and just come down and make those tackles in the open field and also be able to drop back in coverage if they need me to Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're definitely a physical player. No one's ever, and no one who's ever seen you play or played against you is going to deny that you're uh, a sure tackler. I think that's a absolute must. We needed that a little bit. Very surprising against Clemson that we did not tackle as well as we normally do because I think normally we tackle yeah, yeah. fantastic. And that was just kind of a weird thing with us not being able to tackle. But you're definitely a sure tackler. Um, you get in there and make big hits. So. Uh, Justin, you know, I, I appreciate you getting on the show today. Um, uh, very excited as an Irish, uh, alumni and a fan and a fan of the Walters family, uh, to see you come over and can't wait to see great things. So thank you for your time today, boss. Yeah, no problem. All right. We are guys. Hey, now follow us on Twitter. I got the big flow show on Twitter. I'm trying to get into the 21st century. Follow us on YouTube, like hit share or tag a friend on this interview on Facebook. Um, and whatever else I'm missing, just do that too. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, We out.